I think I'm building a computer today? Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to TechFurb. So, corny intro aside, uh, today we're going to be building a server, and I'm just going to dive straight into the specs. Um, because you guys are probably curious what the heck I'm doing with all this hardware. So, very quickly, we have a P55 motherboard uh, with a Intel Core i5-750, so it's a first gen um, Core i series processor. We will be running 16 gig of RAM, hopefully, if it works, if it doesn't like to go back to eight. Um, we will be running a crappy, discrete GT430 graphics card. Uh, reason being that this motherboard does not have discrete graphics. Um, crappy heatsink cooler because we will not be overclocking the CPU even though that is abundantly an option with this motherboard. Uh, and the important part, so storage. SSD for the boot drive um, because I'm lucky enough to have a piece of SSD sitting around. Uh, and for the actual storage of data, we're doing a cardinal sin. Do not freaking do this if you have money. For the rest of you that are probably like me and don't have squat to go and spend on a server, i.e. you're probably spending a couple of hundred bucks and you're done, this video is for you. Um, so, we are going with one terabyte hard drives. They are very, very used. Some dating back 10 years ago, um, which is a big no-no because hard drives are not meant to last that long. Um, but, we don't care in this instance. This is not a mission critical server. This is not hosting the TechVerb video data. This is not hosting the Queensland Rally data. This is just hosting crappy Steam games and just junk that can be downloaded again. So we do not care about it. It is fine. So what we will be doing with these four one terabyte hard drives is we'll be putting them in a RAID 5. Uh, the reason why we'll not be doing a RAID anything else is because RAID 0 gives us no redundancy. The only reason I care about that is because when one of these drives do inevitably fail, I lose a whole lot. Reason why we're not using RAID 1 because we're using more than two drives. Reason why we're not using RAID 10 is because I don't want two terabytes of storage. That's um, a very pipsqueak amount, which leaves me with one option, or two options actually. Um, but in the case of this motherboard, one option, RAID Five, uh, and for those of you that don't know how RAID works, uh, RAID Five effectively you've got four drives here. You'll have uh, sort of magic. We'll just call it magic. And basically, what will happen is you have three drives with the original data on them, and there'll be a fourth parity drive. And what happens is the data is all striped across the drives in a funny, weird, technical way that I don't know how to explain properly. Um, but basically, you can lose one of those hard drives and the parity drive will sort of re-jigger itself and magically, even though you've had a dead drive, you will still have a working RAID array. You, you lose one more drive, then your data is gone. That's how RAID works. Um, so, I think uh, we should start building this server. Okay, so the uh, system is now built. Uh, it went well. Um, I did not cable manage it properly because you couldn't cable manage systems like this. The case is quite terrible for that. Um, it takes me back to the good old days when I mean, you just didn't care about that crap and it really doesn't make a big difference. But anyway, um, 
as terrible aesthetics inside and rat's nest inside. Um, no theatrics this time, we're just going to power it up and uh, the first thing we're going to need to do go is go in and make sure all five drives are detected because we have four hard drives plus the SSD. Uh, and we are also going to want to start mucking around configuring some OS's. So uh, hopefully this guy loads up and then uh, I can do my thing. Alright, um, so it's a little bit of a noisy system but that's okay. Um, it's kind of needs to be, it's got a lot of fans running in it. Uh, so, I guess we're going to go with BIOS features. How many have we got? So, we've got one, two, three, four. Look at that! Five drives! Fantastic! We've got all the drives. So, um, now we need to figure out how to put them into a RAID. Uh, so, with these older BIOSes, we don't want to play around with that. Although our CPU temperature is not rising rapidly, so that's good. That's uh, what we want. Uh, Aha! Alright, so I'm pretty sure that's RAID turned on, uh, so we're going to save the config and uh, we'll reboot and there's usually like a menu or something we have to go into. Uh, I think it's Control i or Control r but uh, we will try that. That didn't work! Uh, we will try again! Alright, fantastic. So, Control i to get into the RAID menu on this uh, motherboard, being a gigabyte model, but um, it will vary on the, mo on, um, on the motherboard, so... Not uh, general advice, just sort of observations here. So, um, pretty much, we just want to create a RAID volume, and uh, we will call it RAID 5, and RAID level RAID 5. Perfect. All right, and select disks, and to select that one, that one, that one. Uh, Spacebar and down arrows um, to select the drives. Enter done, total capacity. Okay, so capacity there, so we got 2,794 gigabytes, um, three terabytes in, uh, you know, formatted land. Um, so again, it's that parity we talked about, the RAID 5, where you got the um, three disks with the data on it, the one uh, parity drive, or, you know, sp and it's not a hot spare, but we'll call it a hot spare. Um, and it, it gives you that one drive failure redundancy. Um, again, I don't really care about the data, but it's more just, <sighs> It's less of a pain when you have one drive fail. It's, it's reasonably easy to shut the system off, replace the drive, and carry on. So, um, we're going to create the volume. Uh, yes. Okay, sweet. So, there we go. There's our RAID 5 drive. Uh, so, now uh, we can look at installing an OS. So, we should probably do that. That's it, we are done. Uh, so, obviously some software to set up to do on my side, but I'm not gonna bore you guys with that. You guys know how to install your own software. Um, you will notice that this is uh, full-blown Windows 10. Um, the reason for installing Windows 10 uh, is a multitude of reasons. Um, the primary reasons being, if I wanna set this up as a Steam cache, it's best to use a desktop OS. Um, the only desktop OS that will have a Steam repository for Windows is a copy of Windows. And the pretty much, there's only two versions of Windows that are effectively supported by Microsoft in terms of security patching anymore. Uh, and that's Windows 8.1 and uh, Windows 10. I don't have a copy of Windows 8.1, so um, that pretty much left me with Windows 10. Uh, it is Windows 10 Pro installed, um, and a lot of the features that I will need to use in a server um, are on there. So if you need to do any file sharing or anything like that, it works pretty much the same as um, the, the full-blown server version, albeit uh, it doesn't support anywhere near the amount of users that a full-blown file server would. Um, but for what I need to do here, it's fine. Um, I could domain join it, I'm not going to. Um, it'll just be a local work group uh, with just the shares on it that it needs. Um, it may do a couple of other things. It may have Hyper-V installed on it, which is an option. Um, but generally speaking, it's a pretty basic system, um, hence the very sort of jank setup of it. Um, and I guess at the end of this experience, obviously not having used the server for a year or a long time or even properly configured it yet, but I've, I've done it with other machines before. Um, the question is, should you do this? <sighs> no. But, uh, if you're in a position like I am where it's not your primary server, yeah, sure, um, it works. 
So the reason why I say that is if you are looking for a server to set up in the home, um, do not use secondhand parts because servers need to be reliable. And I can promise you this box sitting here is going to have issues. It's going to shut down or it's not going to run 24 seven properly. There's probably going to be a drive that's going to fail and there's going to be weird issues with it. Um, that you just get with old hardware that you won't get with, um, with new hardware. And the other thing is it's old consumer grade hardware being used in a manner that it was not designed to be used. It's not designed to be 24 seven. Uh, it's designed to be turned on, used for a few hours and then turned off and you do something else. Um, so we're sort of way outside of the edge case. Um, we're not even using remotely enterprise, hell, we're not even using NAS grade drives. We're using desktop grade drives, um, which are not optimized for the workload. So the speeds are going to be slow, but we're bottlenecked by a, a one giga, one giga, bit link, um, so 125 maximum, uh, 125 megabytes per second, maximum theoretical speed, I can promise you it never hits that speed. Um, so, you know, it's not the end of the world. Um, so, thanks for watching guys, a uh, bit of a different video, but so I thought maybe I should do something different as opposed to just doing another CPU review, like, um, you, you want to change your content, I want to do something different have a passion for this stuff. Um, I hope that you found this useful in some way, shape or form. Uh, so if you like the video, leave a like. If you disliked it, you can do that thing. Uh, get subscribed if you're not subscribed already. I do upload semi-regularly. I'm trying to get back onto a more regular schedule um, and time is being afforded to me now to do so. Uh, I've, I've changed jobs recently, which means I have more time. I'm not traveling as much as I used to. Um, still doing a lot of the rally stuff on the side, but during the weekdays, um, I should have more time to do tech for videos, uh, without it causing burnout. So, um, yeah, hopefully we should get any more videos on the channel. Uh, the discord server is there. If you want to jump on and ask me questions, uh, link in the description. Uh, and I guess thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.